Hey everyone, welcome to another art product review. Today we are going to look at this watercolor art journal that is made by B Paper Company. The company makes four different types of journals, one for watercolor, there's also one for mixed media, colored pencils, and the last one is for markers. I have had good experience with some of their watercolor paper, more specifically their 300 GSM 100% cotton paper. That performed really well and that's sold in loose sheets. So when I saw that they have this art journal and it comes with um, cotton paper, it's only 25% cotton paper though. So I decided to just um, buy one and try it out. With this watercolor journal, you have the option of buying the 25% cotton version or the 100% cotton version. I bought this many months ago from Amazon and mine is the 25% cotton version. And now when I look at Amazon's product page again, I see that they have listed this as having 100% cotton. As I search online for other reviews, I found Danny Soden's video review on YouTube. She runs the channel in liquid color. Her findings and experiences with the paper is similar to mine, so I don't think there's going to be any difference between buying 25% cotton or 100% cotton. The paper that's used in this spiral bound hardcover is natural white. It's extra heavy weight. It is 260 GSM. It comes in different sizes. The one that I bought is A4 size. That's 8.5 by 11 inches. And it has 35 sheets in this pad here. And the paper is acid free. So let's take a look at the paper. So it's spiral bound on the side. This is some cardboard cover. The cover is quite thick and so are the individual sheets of paper. So this art journal overall is quite thick. In today's review, we will be comparing the 25% cotton paper in this art journal with the 100% cellulose paper here. This has no cotton content. And lastly, we are going to compare with the Archer's 100% cotton paper. So we can get a good idea of how the paper performs relative to other types of paper with different cotton content. So this is how the art journal looks like. We have a sheet of translucent paper here at the front and also at the back. This is the first sketch that I painted with the watercolors. When I laid the first wash onto this paper, I felt instantly that something was wrong. It feels like the paper and the water is very immobile. With good watercolor paper, you want the paint to be able to move around, you want the colors to be able to blend, but here it seems like when the paint is on the paper, it's going to remain fixed, it doesn't move around that much. It's good for painting hard edges like this, but if you want to use wet on wet techniques, you are going to be sorely disappointed. The other thing I felt was the colors, they look a bit dulled down so it's not as vibrant compared to other papers that I have used. If you use high quality paints it's not too bad the colors are still vibrant but if you use anything less the colors can be um, quite muted. Also notice the paper texture this has almost no texture at all this is actually some fine green paper it's not those cold press textured surface that we normally see with watercolor paper. So the fine grain texture on this paper it's very different compared to normal cold press watercolor paper. And the natural white of the paper it's a bit creamy compared to this watercolor paper which I just picked off randomly from my shelf. So this also affects the color vibrancy when you apply watercolor over it. Let's take a look at some of the sketches I have in this art journal. So if you're going to be using pencils, I think it's fine because of the fine grain texture. It works well with pencils, colored pencils as well. You can create line art with pencils, you can do shading. And because the paper is quite smooth, it's great for drawing with ink as well, like dip pens or fountain pens. 
For this particular sketch, I used Daniel Smith watercolor. So the colors, they are actually quite vibrant, but um, still felt a bit off, especially when I tried to blend the colors. It just does not work. Let me show you a more obvious example. This is also painted with Daniel Smith, so colors are very vibrant. And that's because of the watercolor, not because of the paper. Here I had great difficulty um, painting this um, gradient. Um, the paper just doesn't sort of uh, soak the water, so it's very difficult to paint a gradient like this. I'm going to show you um, a demonstration later on. Let's take a look at this area here. For this area here, I wanted to create a very soft transition of colors. I want the ultramarine to blend softly into the burnt sienna. And it's very difficult to do so. Can you see here the two areas of colors? They are quite obvious. And here they don't blend as well. And here it's quite obvious as well. I can even see um, streaking marks this is burnt sienna this is ultramarine and we have burnt sienna again we have ultramarine and we have burnt sienna again so the colors they do not blend together nicely so that's the biggest problem with this paper if you want to use any sort of wet on wet techniques it's very challenging and the results it's not going to look nice so let's move on to the demonstration to show you exactly what I'm talking about, to show you in better clarity. Let's start by painting a gradated wash. This is French ultramarine. Now notice how the colors appear on the paper. It looks quite flat. So let me try and add another color to it. Just sort of blend the colors together. And immediately I start to see the streaking marks let me try and blend as smoothly as i can and now let's create the gradated wash i'm going to fit this color into the white of the paper and it's very difficult because it, look, it feels like the colors, they are already immobile. So can you see the hard edge earlier? I barely applied the watercolor and the colors already went into the paper and it just doesn't want to move anymore. So this is what we have so far. Let's wait for this to dry. Meanwhile, let's paint another block here. So for this swatch here, I'm going to charge in some colors while this wash is still wet. So let's charge in that color again, the same color that I used earlier. Notice how the colors, they don't blend at all. This color is just sitting on top of ultramarine. And by the way, this paper is actually tilted at an angle. So let me try and tilt it more to see if the colors actually move down. So the cool rate, it's not moving at all. This is very bad. There is no other way to describe it. It's, it's really very bad. Now, if that is not obvious enough for you, let me repeat it by doing another demonstration this time. I'm going to wet the paper first with water. Let's see if we can get a nice transition. Notice how the colors, how the pigments, they sort of explode out. I'm going to tilt the paper again to see how the colors, how it flows down. This is not looking good. With good watercolor paper, when you apply paint onto a wet surface, 
it will just blend softly into the wet areas but here you can see those streaking marks it's very distracting all right let's move on to using the cellulose paper this is daily roundly aqua fine watercolor paper i'm going to do the same thing with this cellulose paper i'm going to paint a gradation now notice that this paper it has more texture compared to the other And now let's clean the brush and fade this to white. And now let's try the charging in of colors. So while this wash is still wet, I'm going to charge in with the cool red. So same thing, I'm going to draw some horizontal lines to see if the colors they will spread out and if they will flow down and now let's wet the paper and see if the colors they will blend softly All right, let's wait for this to dry. And now let's move on to using 100% cotton watercolor paper. Let's do the same thing, a gradated wash first. Now the feeling of painting on cotton paper, it's very different compared to other types of paper. Now notice here, notice how the colors, they are already softly blending even upwards. So now I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to blend this color into the white of the paper. Now with the other two uh, paper that I used earlier, the colors, um, they were rather immobile very quickly after I applied it onto the paper, but here, with archers, you can see this soft transition. This is so nice. It's so easy to work with. And now let's try the charging in of color. So this wash is still wet. And while it's still wet, let's charging some colors. I'm going to again draw horizontal lines again. And I'm going to let the colors sort of uh, move around by tilting the paper. And now let's wet the paper so that we can apply color onto it and see how it reacts. Same thing, ultramarine. Let's let the color run down. I'm trying to paint horizontal lines like this to try and recreate streaking lines and see how it's going to look like later on. All right, let's look at our results. This is B paper. So this is ultramarine and... All right, let's look at our results. So this is B paper. The transition here is quite soft. It's not too bad. Here I can see a hard edge, so if you want to blend colors, you have to work really quickly because the colors will become permanent very quickly. So to create gradients like this, you have to work really fast. This is me trying to charge in some colors while the wash is still wet and the colors, they just, they just do not spread out, they just do not blend nicely. So if you want to blend colors, it's very challenging, it's very difficult. 
and earlier on I was actually um, tilting the paper to make sure that the colors they flow down so that they can blend even so the colors um, the red color it did not move much same thing here the color did not move much and here you can see that it's staying just right here where I painted the stroke some of the colors actually um, sort of um, explode out at the edge here you can see some of the colors trying to run out I can say with certainty that this is not very good watercolor paper so let's um, take a look at the cellulose paper now this cold press texture this makes the wash look interesting even though it's just one single color as compared to this B paper I see some nice transition of colors I was able to fit the color into the white of the paper but it's not as gradual as I want it to be so it does need um, more work and here I tried charging in the colors the colors they blend slightly better compared to B paper so we get some soft blending of colors but when you look at this you can still tell that I painted the horizontal strokes like this same thing here the colors they mostly stayed at where i painted them they do move a bit when i tilt the paper this is not as bad compared to this you can see that this is really ugly and lastly let's take a look at the 100 percent cotton paper the arches so this transition here this is very soft very gradual very nice and it's very easy to work on this paper so even though i painted the red color here some of the red actually moved upwards to blend softly with the ultramarine so the transition here it's much softer compared to here and also here Now this paper is a bit dry so you see some uh, white speckle of the paper showing through fading into the white of the paper it's really easy because the paper soaks in the water and the paint it's still wet so you can still move the colors around very easily so for this when i charge in the colors they also blend very softly they try to blend softly back into the main wash as compared to here here the transition is a bit more gradual a bit softer but still you can see that I applied the strokes horizontally and this cold press texture it's very different compared to this the texture here is more pronounced and lastly we have this wet surface where I applied paint onto it I painted horizontal strokes and I tilt the paper and can you see just how beautifully the colors they blend together the colors they move down and they blend together into one soft shape like this as compared to this and to B paper the archers um, it works wonderfully so why do we want colors to blend well so that I can get effects like this where the colors blend softly into each other you can get transitions like this now this is a texture that is very similar to B paper and yet um, the paper performs very differently just because this is 100% cotton paper this is Archer's hot press by the way the B paper art journal is actually perforated so you can actually tear off the pages I'm going to tear this off wow it's actually not easy to tear off anyway let me just um, tear it off like this I want to put it side by side with this so they can see the comparison a bit closer even the perforated edges are difficult to tear so this is how the three so this is how the three different papers look side by side 0% cotton, 100% cotton, 25% cotton I think the results speak for themselves it's quite obvious this is not very good watercolor paper 
This is not suitable for any serious type of work and if you are using it for art journaling, if you are using watercolor, I think it's very easy to get frustrated when painting on this. The colors, they are not as vibrant. It's very difficult to get those colors to blend and sometimes you have all these uh, weird effects. Overall, I was quite disappointed with the paper. I guess if you want to buy this for children to play around with, it's all right. If you want to use pencil or ink on this paper, it's fine. But for a product that's marketed for use with watercolor, it doesn't perform well with watercolor, it's very disappointing. And if you are going to use this for yourself, for painting, uh, many of the watercolor techniques, they are quite difficult to uh, achieve on this paper, so it can get quite frustrating as well. So that's all for today's review. I hope this is helpful. I will scan all this and put the high resolution scans on my website. So if you want to take a look at them, you can just visit the link in the video description below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.